In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can spend 66 bucks to make a laptop from 2014 just as fast as one from 2019. Let's jump into it. So recently I went to my grandma's house down on the south coast and uh, I found this old laptop which is one of the slowest and most painful things in the world. Um, it was just sitting there, she doesn't use it anymore but she would like to use it so I said look you know I'm tech biz, I'll take your laptop and I'll see what I can do with it and upon loading it up it just had so much malware and viruses, it had McAfee, it was just shocking. So let me walk you through the specs of it. So the screen size is 15.6 inches with a 1080p TN panel. The processor is an i7-4510U with 2GHz base and 3.1GHz turbo. It comes with 8 gigs of RAM in one stick and it comes with a 1TB hard drive at 5400rpm. And the laptop also comes with an NVIDIA GeForce GT 820N. Now for the hard part, is the time that it takes to boot. As you can see, I've just turned it on, literally just pressed the button two seconds ago, and now we wait. 12 seconds later. And we're finally into the desktop at around 55 seconds. As you can see by the Cinebench results, um, yeah, it's not the fastest system. 1183 points. Not the best, but let's see what the upgrade does for it. So as I mentioned before, I said there was one stick of RAM, uh, it was an 8 gig stick, and I'm adding a 4 gig stick to 12 gigs. Uh, reason I'm doing that is I didn't check and it was actually an 8 gig stick of RAM and I thought it was 4 gigs and I couldn't check because I didn't have it on me. Uh, so we're going to run with 12 gigs, but it should still run in dual channel and it should still give more performance. And then the second upgrade was a 120 gig SSD which should dramatically help this poor and suffering hard drive from its existential death. So yeah, let's get into it. So one of the best things about old laptops is actually their ease of upgradability. As you can see, if we flip it over, there's actually a lot of options. Now this side panel pops off, this is the battery, this is the uh, disc reader, and all this can be taken out. All you have to do to remove the back panel is unscrew three screws, here, here and here. You'll want to make sure you pop your screws somewhere safe and that you won't lose them otherwise you're going to have an open laptop. All you have to do is slide it out and it comes off just like that. So as you can see we can now see the internals, you've got a copper heat pipe, I'm not going to touch that because it's literally just been on. Here we have our hard drive and we have our RAM and as you can see we've only got one RAM slot filled up. So here we've got our stick of RAM, I'm contemplating removing the stickers. So you want to find the notch on your motherboard, then you want to insert it at an angle, push in, here a little crunch, and there, your RAM's installed. Easy as that. Now I'm going to put the cover back on and see what the performance is like in Cinebench before I upgrade the SSD. So just as a little side note, I just clicked Cinebench about 3 minutes ago and it's only just loaded now. And as you can see, our disk is currently at 100%. Now that's because we're running a hard drive. And as you can see, read speed and write speed is around 2-4 megabytes a second, according to Google. A typical 7200 RPM hard drive, now this isn't 7200 RPM, but normally it's 80 to 160 megabytes a second. This is a fraction of that, 40 times less, roughly. I'm not good at maths, but it's roughly 40 times. Now that we've got the 12 gigs of RAM installed, I think it's time that we run some Cinebench and see if it performs any better. So I'm just going to close this and let it run, and I'll be back in a year. So next I'm going to put the SSD in my main computer, um, I'll plug that in and then from there I'm going to download the Windows 10 ISO and then I should be good to just plug it in there and it should be running a lot faster and a lot better. As you might be able to see now, we've got our dodgily set up, totally safe 
SSD, I'm sure it's fine. SSD is a pretty tough. Hey guys, Editor Tech Biz here, and I just realized you don't actually have to plug your SSD into a PC. All you need is a USB drive, and then you download the Windows 10 ISO file to that, and then you can plug it into your laptop. So, you don't actually need to put your SSD in your PC, just not. Okay, so to install the SSD, you want to unscrew the screws just as you did last time. Now this is your hard drive. As you can see, there are four screws that are holding it in, and then after that, it's pretty easy to pop out. There we go, keep those separate from your normal screws, otherwise you might get them mixed up and you might break a thread. Alright, now that you've got all four screws removed, you should be able to slide this drive out in that direction and then it should just really just pop out like so as you can see it's a hard drive it's pretty old it's getting pretty old um, so let's swap it out for the SSD Well, it turns out all the effort I went to of trying to um, uh, unscrew that bracket which resulted in me being cut on my finger um, was actually for nothing because you can just slide it right in and it doesn't need a mount. I'm intelligent and I hurt myself. Great. So now I'm going to put it back together and see if it boots. I just ended up um, grabbing a USB media device and just putting the SSD in. Um, and that seems to work because it just uh, goes through all the boot cycles and if one doesn't work it goes to the next option and then it eventually lets you load in. So yeah, I'm now installing Windows on the SSD and it is already a lot faster. I can tell you that. <laughs> I'll just set this up and then I'll show you the results. So now I'm going to run Cinebench on my MacBook Air which is the 2019 late model and I'm going to see how that compares. And the results are in, and I can confirm that it is not as fast as the MacBook. On the old Windows laptop, we got a score of 1175, and on the MacBook, we got a score of 1569. But CPU performance isn't always the whole story of what makes a laptop good. So, let me shut these down and show you the loading times, and the improvement. Okay, so I'll turn them on at the exact same time and then you'll be able to see which one loads on first. Three, two, one. We've got a signal on Lerva, signal on Apple. And we're already in. On Windows. Already in. And still going on my MacBook. Even though I typed in my password on that first. Still going, still going, and we're only just in. Now if I want to open Chrome, let's open that and see how long it takes to open. Windows is already open. I've clicked it. It's still going. I've only just loaded my files on the desktop. wait for it to appear then I can say it's properly working now so as you can see by the results we can see that the RAM and SSD upgrade actually breathed new life into this system before it was barely usable I was struggling to, to actually turn it on and actually get programs running um, but with 66 bucks on another 4 gigs of RAM should have got a naked stick to make it 16 but minor details uh, and also a new SSD, the system's really usable in 2022. So, eight years later, a 2014 laptop in 2022 is still plenty usable for general internet browsing and maybe even gaming. So if you want me to test games on it, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, leave a comment. Like and subscribe if this video helped you out in any way. I'm TechBiz and I'm out. Also, let me know what you think of the background.